Mm. So what do you think of that then? Uh, let's bring the panel into this. Lembit and Danny, should foreign workers have to speak English as a prerequisite? English isn't my first language. Is it not? No. What, what is your first Estonian. language? Estonian. Can you still Estonian. speak Estonian? Yeah, yeah, fluently. Do you dream in Estonian? When I go to Estonia, yeah. But really? I wouldn't normally dream in Estonian here. And I've been variously fluent in French and German and uh, because my father was a fluent German speaker and I sort of got down the path of Welsh, but then I lost my seat. But we're not going back well, to the politician gonna, thing again. No, no, I wouldn't have you. But, 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 but do a bit of Estonian then. Say uh, something in Estonian. I'd uh, like to hear it. I don't think I've been out I can translate I know that. that. I agree with you. I can Take translate on. that. You'll pay too much money. <laughs> and MPs, <laughs> MPs will pay too much money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah have to speak English if they're coming to do a job and to live here. Why not? Because you don't pick strawberries in Polish or Estonian. There are many jobs where you don't need to be fluent, and many of those jobs may not be very high skill, but they have to be done. Um, secondly, because I can only speak from my own family's experience. My, my, my grandmother never, or my mother said, never really spoke great English, but she found a job, and second, third generation, you can pick it up. Um, and I think the other, just the other thing is, you talking about ghettoisation, inevitably, in a truly cosmopolitan environment, the ghettos don't last forever. They kind of dissolve into the rest of the community. Well, they should do, but a ghetto is simply a description of minority groups who end up... Well... Sort of, or not often, if you don't speak the language, it could be that you would end up in I, an impoverished... They situation. don't last forever, though. They, well, I don't know. I, I can tell you first-hand, Lembit, um, when I worked in Birmingham, there are areas of Birmingham, I, I won't call them ghettos, I'll call them communities, impoverished in parts, but they are purely, I would say, the area of Aston, for example, would be 90, 95% Asian, Pakistani or Bangladeshi. And I don't see any evidence, and I was working in Birmingham for 20 odd years, I don't see any evidence of them dissolving mm. into the wider community. My best mates are second generation Sikh lads. And my best mate's uh, 53 years old, but I can't have a conversation with his father who came over here in the 1960s. So I'm not convinced that, that it was fascinating what that gentleman was saying, mm -hmm. but I'm not convinced that e e everybody goes to the trouble to learn the language. Because my pal's father basically came over from mm -hmm. the Punjab and there were lots of other people from the Punjab and they worked at the Ford Foundry in Leamington Spa and they just sort of had their own little click. What's the problem with that, though? Well, the problem with that is that this guy's 17, he can't string but, a sentence together in English. But, but, but I don't see that as a problem. What you described is what happened in my family. My grandparents didn't speak great English, but my parents did because they grew up here. And that's, that's what I mean by the, the dissolving factor. The, the other thing, I, you've just said it yourself, those people in your friend's family did have jobs, and they did jobs that are needed. And I think we've got a skills shortage. We talked about that in terms of nurses. If we say you've got to speak English, then leaving aside the kind of colonial undertones of it, well, it also why misses is that, the point. Why is that a colonial undertone to say that somebody should speak the language of the country that they're in? But, it's not a colonial undertone, it's just a requirement because it makes society a lot easier for the people within the country and also is not so much of a drain on resources. It, it makes it easier for those who speak English. It doesn't necessarily make our society more, uh, more effective. Uh, and we're lucky in a way because I'm very lucky that I speak English because it's still used the English, Spanish, and Chinese. You've got those three you can get it's by anyone. Anyway. Colonised everything. Yeah, well, there is. That's why. That's <laughs> just, <laughs> and, and I'm not. I'm not great on uh, everyone having to apologise for the past. But in the present, I actually think that by and large, for a lot of the jobs we're talking about, you don't need to speak. English. Uh, if you're a pilot, then you have to be able to speak English, which is the aviation language. You don't want to have confusion in which airline you're meant to be using or where you're meant well, to land. Well, that's the whole point of it. But, it might not be as big as being a pilot and flying and killing people, but, but it's... it's uh, Len, but just to come back on to, to your point about dissolving into the wider community, if you can't speak English fluently by the time you're, say, 70, like my pal's dad, then you're not going to have the ability to dissolve any wider into the community, are you? But these, but you're going to have to... Because you're not going to move into, let's just say, a, a white neighbourhood, and unless you want to just cocoon yourself indoors and hermit-like yeah. existence, you're not going to be able to communicate. But, but what happened was, in Estonia... My, my, parents lived in, in, my grandparents lived in Leicester, and there's a very large ethnic community there, biggest in, in proportion in the whole country. Yeah. 
and there was a big Estonian community, and they tended to live in that Estonian community, but they didn't do any harm. They were very grateful for the fact they, they weren't sent back to the Soviet Union to be killed, as members of my family were. So they were good citizens of this country. Second point, we're missing uh, the biggest stratification in our country, which is about wealth. The people in Kensington don't spend a huge amount of time with the people in, from, from East London, say. And, and just because they all speak the same language doesn't mean they really use the same language. Uh, and, and I just think we're deciding that language, language, in a literal sense, is an issue, when actually, if, if you put someone together from a very posh part of London and a white uh, English-speaking person from another part of London, they've probably got less in common than just about everyone in Leicester, regardless of whether English is good or not. I hear you, but it's more about work as well. It's in the working environment as to whether they could be effective in that environment, which is, would have been one of the reasons why there would be a prerequisite for them to speak the language. But mm, interesting stuff. Lots of you have been getting in touch with your views on this. And we're asking, should people who come to work in the UK be required to speak English?